Hey guys, this is Jay. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is part two of my MCAS activity section. If you haven't seen part one yet, it's linked in the description below. So take a look at that first and let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my AMCAS activity section. If you haven't checked out part one yet, you can find it in the description below. So in this section, I'm going to go over the rest of my activity section where I go over my medical and clinical activities as well as my top three most significant activities. And I will try to fly through this so it's not extremely long. So let's get started. So my medical activities, one of the first things is I was a Casa de Salud volunteer. So here I was an administrative volunteer, basically in a clinic that was serving uninsured or underinsured patients, typically from new immigrants and refugees who encountered a lot of different barriers and access to healthcare. Um, so here I didn't really interact directly that much with patients. I was working just to transition their charts, which used to be on paper onto this new online system. And then I also helped to organize some other fundraising and awareness events. So this was a very short term experience for me, only a couple of months, not that many hours. And I didn't really get that much out of this experience, to be completely honest. I didn't feel like the organization was very well put together to coordinate volunteers, which makes sense because they didn't have that much you know, income or money. So they had to target their focus on specific things. Um, so I would say one of the key takeaways here is for me is I was able to kind of work more with immigrant populations and work towards more of cultural competency and cultural awareness. Now, one thing to note for myself is that I didn't really realize that I wanted to be pre-med and apply to med school until the end of my sophomore year or even the beginning of my junior year. So that's why you'll notice that my medical activities are significantly fewer than my non-medical activities because I only had roughly two years to catch up on the shadowing and the volunteering that I needed for med school. So moving on from this one, we go on to physician shadowing and clinical observation. And again, you can see here that it's only roughly less than a year, 44 hours, so not that many clinical hours. But I had the opportunity of observing several different specialties, one at a children's hospital with pedi pediatric surgeon, and um, then some in ENT, as well as cardiothoracic. So this was a really cool experience because I got to see the Da Vinci surgical system, which if you don't know, it's where the, the surgeon is behind like this computer and they're controlling the Da Vinci robot, which does like super precise um, surgeries from a distance. And so I got to see the removal of a left part of the lung. So that was really cool. But at the same time, during this surgical experience, I was in an environment that I didn't enjoy that much. Everybody in that room seemed very tense. And the surgeons and the residents and even the medical students that were there to observe didn't seem to get along very well. People were kind of like snapping at each other and being rude. And so that was kind of a moment of realization for me is that I don't want to be in an environment like this. If I were a surgeon or in an operating room, I would not want to experience this tension. I want a collaborative effort. So that was something that I was able to bring up and discuss in my interviews, because even though it was a very short term experience, it quickly showed me what I wanted and what I didn't want out of my, my future as a physician. So, and then I bring up that the biggest learning opportunity for me was when children were brought into the operating room and how doctors kind of catered all of their attention to try and keep the children relaxed and accommodate the situation. So two very drastic experiences, one in pediatrics was very positive, and then the one in the robotic surgery was the complete opposite of, of what I wanted to experience. But again, the key takeaway here is, right, you don't know that story unless I'm in an interview to expand on that. Just based on reading my activity section, the key takeaway is, one, I was able to observe a variety of procedures, and two, I was able to observe a variety of patient interactions. Moving on, we continue with physician shadowing and clinical observation. So yet again, this was kind of a short-term experience. For me, one year is pretty short-term, I would say, and um, only about 50 hours. So here I have my own gastroenterologist that I had known since the age of 16 or 17. And I really loved how he works with me and how he treats me. So one day I just reached out to him and I said, Hey, I'm interested in going to medical school. Can I please shadow you? And he was more than open to the idea. So basically I was able to observe in the GI lab where um, they did a lot of colonoscopies and endoscopies 
And I was just basically able to follow him and his interactions with patients and examining them in the office. So it was amazing because I got to see his bedside manner. I got to see how he treats patients, how he interacts with their families. So some of the key takeaways here for me were his bedside manner and the patient interaction. And so again, in my interviews, I was able to speak on how I saw how he interacted with his patients and how he developed trust and how he paid attention to their full history when examining them. And then I was basically able to say, this is the environment or this is how I want to pursue my future path in medicine is I want to embody what I am seeing here because I really value it as a patient. And I can see how other patients are appreciating the care that this physician is taking as well. So this was a pretty, pretty impactful experience for me, I would say. Moving on. So my university also had a disability service club. And I decided to volunteer there because I had actually minimal experience working with people with any type of disability. And this was only a couple of months, not that many hours, but I was able to assist elderly individuals with Down syndrome and then participate in some full day workshops for, for teens with Down syndrome. And this was, again, a big learning opportunity for me. You can see that I expressed that here because it was the first opportunity to interact closely with individuals with Down syndrome. Now, I never had anybody in my direct family or any direct friends that have Down syndrome. So this was definitely kind of an eye opening experience of getting to see how how the older adults and individuals had adapted to their life and then how how parents were approaching their young adults uh their their children with down syndrome and how they took care of them and how we reacted to different situations so i was definitely able to speak about that in my interview as well and how i learned a lot from it because it was my first direct interaction with um with people with Down syndrome. And again, as a physician, you don't know who is going to come into your room in, in your in your office and who you're going to have to take care of. You will have a, a huge variety of people to take care of. So it's important that you're exposed to different populations. And moving on, the Atlantis Project Pre-Medical Fellowship. So during my undergrad, I never really had the opportunity to study abroad because I was a, an engineer. And as an engineer, we had super rigorous cu curriculum. But also as a pre-med, you have so many other things to focus on and your pre-med classes to take care of. So I never had the time to study abroad and I took this as, this as an opportunity and I can expand on this experience in another video. But basically for three weeks during my summer, I went to Athens and I was able to shadow in a public and a private hospital. So I got to see a variety of different surgeries, a variety of inpatient, outpatient procedures. And also, of course, I got to engage with Greek culture, Greek beliefs, and interact with a bunch of other students that were there during that time. So it was a really, really cool experience for me, even though it was, again, pretty short term, but it was like, while we were there, we were constantly at the hospital. So I enjoyed my time. And one of the things that I would take away as, let's say if I were an admissions committee reading this is I can deduce, right, somebody went outside of their comfort zone to go abroad for maybe their first time and, you know, try to adapt quickly. So you're emphasizing adaptability to this new environment and shadowing in this new hospital and not knowing the language. Um, so shadowing abroad, that means that you could probably look at differences in healthcare systems and be able to compare the U.S. versus different places and have an open mind and bring values that you learned abroad back to the U.S. And then um, another thing is because I love this program so much, I tried to bring it to countries that I had connections to because I thought it was so valuable and I wanted to expose others to this program. So I started working with the leaders within the program and taking initiative to build relationships with them and build relationships with sites that I was connected to. So again, this shows initiative and being able to build long-term relationships with people that you interact with. Now, in retrospect, this was kind of a learning experience for me. And I think when we ask undergrads to shadow, right? We think, oh, I need this many hours in order to get into med school. I need this many hours of shadowing, this many hours of volunteering. So I think I was, when I was an undergrad, I was in this mindset, like I need to check this off my list. I need this many hours in order for my application to be solid. But what I didn't actually realize is why do we shadow? So we go in with the purpose to check off this from our list. But instead, now I realize I should have been paying more attention not to the procedures, not to the hours, but to actual physicians and the day and what their life looks like every single day. And if that is something that I want to do. I remember standing in these surgeries in Greece and, and just hours and hours kind of standing there and being 
not excited, kind of being bored. And maybe it's because I'm not engaging, right? Maybe I'm, I, I'm not at the one actually performing the surgery. So I'm just standing there observing, but I was not excited. And so now I can reflect on that and think, okay, I was shadowing not to try and learn a procedure, but actually to see if this is what I want to do every single day, what the physician is doing from morning to evening. Is that how I envision my life looking like in the future? So that's one important thing. Why do we shadow? Make sure that you're aware when you're shadowing what you are reflecting on is why you are there and whether this excites you and you can see yourself doing this rather than trying to learn a procedure or trying to just check mark behind how many hours you were there. So that's my insight. The video turned out to be 20 minutes and because I don't want to make you guys suffer through 20 minutes, I'm going to post a third part with my most significant activities and some tips for you. So make sure you comment if you have any questions below and subscribe to get the third part of my AMCAS activity section. See you guys next time.